Hi, and welcome to this art workshop that we're doing today online with Worcester Cathedral. Now, we're going to do two things that I really love. We're going to do art and we're going to do getting outdoors. We are going to use pencil and paper. You can use felt tips if you've got any. You can use paints if you've got any. You could use pastels. Whatever you've got, we're going to be able to use them today. If you've just got paper and pencil, then that's absolutely fine. You can join in perfectly. Another thing that I really love is visiting places like Worcester Cathedral because there are so many interesting things and there are so many little secrets in there that you might not always notice. I used to work in a church where high up in the stonework on the outside there was a sculpture of Winston Churchill and a sculpture of Shakespeare. Now the people walking by wouldn't have noticed that, it was just something which the designers did for their own enjoyment. Now symbols and symbolism that we found in cathedrals in different places like Buster Cathedral um, are really important in all cultures. And just like when the designers of the cathedral use symbolism, we use symbolism today. So, do you know what this means? This is a symbol that we use today. Ah. I think you got that right. So that represents love and it's a heart shape. It's shaped like that because it's vaguely the shape of our human heart where we tend to think that our love comes from. And we now share the knowledge that that symbol, that shape represents love. If I do this to it, that can represent a broken heart. I think we all recognize that. And what about this symbol? happy. We recognise that as being happy. And this one, not so good. But we all tend to recognise symbols. Now this is one that I expect you see a lot in your school books. It means something is correct. And we love to see that sort of symbol. It saves the teachers writing correct all the time, which I'm sure they do in their books. Now, what does this mean? Now, this could mean two different things. It can mean incorrect, so I'm sure you never see that in your school books. But it can also mean kiss. Now, we'd have to look at that in context. And we can normally work out what a symbol means because of where it is. If you see this in your birthday card, it probably means a kiss rather than that something is incorrect. So we do have to look at things in context. And letters are also symbols. Now my name is Cheryl. So these shapes represent me. They represent letters and together they represent a name and that name represents me. We also have to be careful how we use these as well because sometimes we might use an acronym. Now an acronym is when we use the first letters of words rather than writing out the whole word. Now, what do you think this means? Okay, I can hear two answers. This could mean laugh out loud or it could mean lots of love. So sometimes we have to be careful that the person receiving the message, the person reading it, understands it in the same way that we have sent the message to them. Some workplaces don't allow acronyms because there's a risk of misunderstanding. So, here's another symbol. I have got no idea what this means. It's an emoji. What does it mean? Tell me. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear that anymore. I'm definitely not going to be using that emoji on a message to my mum. Anyway, in Worcester Cathedral, you'll find loads of symbols and we're going to look today at the tiles that we see on the floor. Now, we don't always notice the tiles. We tend to just walk on them, but they're really interesting and there's a lot of different symbols. Now, can you see this tile that's coming up on the screen next to me now? This is a lion. So what do you think the lion represents? Yeah. That's an easy one. The lion is the king of the jungle and he represents power and authority. And the circle, now what do you think the circle represents? Now I can't be exactly sure, but to me, it reminds me of something that's eternal 
and everlasting. It keeps on going. Now, there's something that I've got here. This is a wedding ring, and that's a circle. Thankfully, it fits on your finger as well, but the round, eternal, never-ending shape of it represents eternity. And some rings that have got stones all the way around are actually known as eternity rings. Now, these next tiles coming up have got fish on them. And what do you think these represent? Well, these remind me of the disciples. Now, some of Jesus' very best friends were fishermen. They were just normal men. And I like that because Jesus chose normal people like me and you to be his very best friends. It also reminds me of the story when Jesus fed 5,000 people. He fed them with just five loaves of bread and two little fish, which were given by a young boy. This reminds me that God can do miracles and also reminds me that God knows exactly what we need. Now, even though these tiles are all the same, they can be looked at differently depending on what angle they're turned at. So if you look at the picture now, you'll see four of those tiles together and it makes it look like shapes of leaves. Now, I really like this design because we might be able to use it as part of our project later using these shapes of the leaves and it also shows shapes of flowers i've got some flowers here this is a house plant but you can see the shapes within the design that shows the leaf shapes and the flower shapes but turn the other way around which you should be able to see on the picture now it makes a full circle you can still see the leaf shapes, but the circle stands out more. Now, this reminds me of a pizza. I don't think the Victorian designers thought about pizza. But if you look at it, you've got the square box, the round pizza and the four slices. Now, I wouldn't choose fish on my pizza. I wouldn't choose lions on my pizza either for that matter. Would you? So we're going to go outside and we're going to collect things to design our very own tiles to represent nature and creation. Now you could turn that into something symbolic. So what do we think about green leaves? These are actually from an evergreen plant, but green leaves can represent spring and hope and new life. And these beautiful flowers as well, these just make me feel so happy in the house. So. When you are out collecting, it's worth remembering a couple of other things. Now, in cathedrals, you often see things designed in fours or threes. So the four leaf shapes, if you can see <clears throat> on the tiles, may have represented Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. They are Jesus' friends who wrote the four Gospels. And often you'll see that sort of shape or that number within shapes in a cathedral. Now, if you look, think about that fish pizza, I think they'd have all got a slice. And the, number three often represents the Trinity. Now that means the three parts of God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So when you're out and about, you might want to think about collecting things in threes or fours. And another thing you can do while you're out and about is to take a frame with you. I really like using a frame because it makes you notice things a little bit more. So I've cut out this cardboard frame. And if I put things into it, it helps me notice the shape a little bit more. Now these are house plants. But, but if you put that in front of the leaves, suddenly you begin to notice this shape here a lot more than you would have done if you were looking at the whole plant. So, when you are out and about, you could take a little frame with you. This is about the size of a normal tile, but you could make a huge one or a tiny one. Now, I'm sure you don't have a little frame sitting around, so I'm going to show you how to make your very own frame in about 30 seconds. This is a piece of cardboard off a cereal box. Now, I really want it to be square. So I'm gonna fold it corner to the edge. 
I can't show you this very well on the screen, but there we go. A folded it corner to corner. That is going to be my square. So what I'm going to cut off is this section. Now, if you need help with scissors, make sure you get a grown up to help you with this. So now I've got a square. It's not much use, I can't see through it yet. So to make it really quickly, keep your square, get a ruler, doesn't really matter how thick it is, and you're going to draw a line along here. You don't need to measure anything. There's my line, and I'm also going to draw a line along the other straight edge. Ta -da! Very rough because I'm holding it in the air. So I've got this. So I'll keep it folded. Really easy now. Cut your lines up to here and cut your other line. So you've got a triangle popping out there. There's my waist, there's my collard board and then you open it up and you've got your frame. So you can take that out with you. So what I want you to take with you is the frame that you've just made. I want you to take a camera or a phone which is able to take photographs. I want you to take a bag with you, you can collect some things and I want you to take a grown up to help you and to tell you what sorts of things you can pick up. Now while you're out, the things I want you to photograph are using your frame in front of something that's existing, so something that's already there, or you could use your frame to put in a design with leaves and sticks that you might collect while you're looking around. You'll see a few examples coming up on the screen of things that I took when I went out earlier today. Now I'm going to go out again. I'm going to get my woolly hat on. I hope you've got yours ready and I'll see you back here in a few minutes and we will decide what to do with the things that we have collected and photographed. So have a great walk and I'll see you soon. So how was your walk? I got pretty cold and muddy but I used my frames and I collected a few things. So I've got some holly which is pretty nice, nice shapes. Some of this which is off a type of pine tree. I'm wondering if I can use that for some printing as well. And this great leaf. Looks a bit like a fig although I don't think it is. And I've also got some sticks which I think might be quite good for printing as well as making some designs. So I'm going to clean my muddy boots and I'm going to take my coat off. And while I'm doing that, you can have a look at some of the photos I've taken while I've been out. I did manage to find a robin, so see if you can spot the robin. See you in a bit. So how did you get on with your collecting? I've got some interesting things. I've got some twigs. That looks a bit like a tree all by itself. I've got this, which is off a pine tree. This, which is off a plant that looks a bit like a fig, but it isn't. And then these separate leaves that I've already got paint on. And some holly. I really like the shapes in this holly. And I also collected some sticks. You don't always notice sticks but they can be quite interesting. You might have seen one of the photos when I took a picture of some trees. So these actually could look like a forest. You could even put a frame around them and see what you get. Now when I looked at these they reminded me of a Christmas card which I have. I don't know if you can see that with the polar bears and the trees. And I did a sketch of these trees a while ago so if you've got pencil and paper, you might want to look at doing your design like this, simply with twigs and trees. These are really easy to draw. All you need to do really, maybe put a little branch coming off it. This is a charcoal pencil, but you can do it with normal pencils and you can smudge it with your fingers. And then you've got your own tree coming along there. 
So if you want to do that really simply, you could do your own design just using some twigs. Now, I also collected some Christmas cards while I was looking around. I tend to keep these when I like the designs. And you can see here we've got some really nice pictures of twigs, holly, berries. Um, we've got this here, actually, I've got these little berries that are very much like these on this Christmas card. And we've got a holly there as well. Some really stylized designs and some watercolour. In fact, I've got this picture here, which is by an illustrator friend of mine called Sean Heber. And she's used ink and watercolour there, um, painting some leaves and daffodils. So I've got those to help me with my ideas as well. Now, I've still got my frame, and I hope you enjoyed looking at the photographs and you've got some ideas of using your frame. <clears throat> And I've got my leaves. So I'm going to have a little look at these. So these are an interesting shape. You can even just draw around them if you're not confident with making your own shape. And then we've got the holly. Now holly is quite easy to draw really. So you want this sort of shape here. In fact, I'm just going to turn this one into a holly leaf. So you could do this outline light and then simply scoop your shape and then it turns into holly and if you wanted to with these little berry shapes and we've got some berries here as well on these two cards you could look at adding a few berries to it so that's quite a nice shape now i've also got this pine again it seems very Christmassy, but these are great shapes um, and you can do this really quickly you don't have to think too much. Remember, we're just playing around and trying to get some designs. So, you might do it neater than this if you're taking your time. But those are great shapes as well. Now, if I was designing this for my title, um, I think I might choose the holly because I really like that shape. But what I think I'm going to do now is <coughs> use all of all these shapes. So I'm going to draw out my square using the same frame that I took out on my walk. I'm just going to do it with orange there so you can see. Now what I need to do is mark the middle of this. Um, you can do this really lightly with a pencil. But if I mark the middle, I've not done that very well, you can see where you want to aim for. Now use a really light pencil for this and draw this draw the shapes that you want from the middle to the side i'm going to use four we talked about the number four and the number three but four lends itself a lot better to doing these leaf shape on the square and you can probably remember the tile which was um had the fish on now those were individual tiles with the fish, if you remember. So each square was like this and they were put together. We're doing this whole design in one square. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to choose one of these to stay like this as a normal leaf shape. I'm going to choose one to be holly. Now when you do yours with a lighter pencil, you can rub out these edges. I'm going to choose one to be the fern. Again, don't forget to rub out the edges later on yours. This is charcoal, so this isn't going to rub out. And I've got one left, but what I might do is break the rules and design my own leaf using these buds. I need to get something in. I'm going to do this in Deltif actually. Maybe a pink for a change. So I'm going to put, make a leaf shape because I do want to retain that same shape to match the others. Now, if I was doing this as my final design, I would probably just use one leaf shape all the way around. But as we're just practicing, we can do whatever we like. So I think for this, First one here, I'm going to use some crayons. 
Now what I've got here is some water soluble cones. You will find when you look at tiles in the cathedral that a lot of them are earthy colours so you'll get browns and creams. You might also get blue sometimes. Now these brown colours, particularly the ochres, um, come from earth colours so they were probably just the colours that they had available when they made the tiles originally. Um, if you buy proper quality paints now these are the expensive colours because they're not synthetic, they have to be dug from the ground. And also this colour, which is called Prussian Blue, this is another one that has to be dug from the ground. So when you buy the proper quality pigments, that's why those are more expensive, because it's really hard for people to get them. I think I'm going to use green here. And the Prussian Blue that they dig up from the ground is one of the colours they use to make the greens. So I'm going to start with a bit darker green at the bottom. I mean, you can do it in whichever colour you want. I'm using green, which is the actual colour of the leaf. But these are these um, are not that different in their colour. But I'm going to bring some more colours in just to make it a little bit more interesting. Now I need to get some water. So I'm going to fill that in with my colours in a minute, I will show you how that works with the water. This one here, which is the fern, I'm just going to show you with some felt tips on here. Um, these are marker pens. Um, because I've used a charcoal, you might not see the difference so well. I'm going to use three different shades of green there. Now these pens have got um, two ends on them, so one end is um, a bit chisel. I'm just going to fill those in really quickly, just to give us some ideas of the shape that you might get. I do like that pine cone. And then I've got my holly leaf. So let's let's put the water on here. I'm going to use quite a thick brush because we're just being um, fairly fluid. You don't need to be too careful here, but you can see those pencils are turning into paint. It's nice not to be too careful because you just let the paint do what it wants to. And for this holly leaf, I'm going to get some actual watercolour paints. So here's a tray of watercolours. There's quite when you buy a tray like this, you get quite a lot of greens. Um, so I'm gonna, that's quite a dark green there, and as you can see, it's mixing with the charcoal a little bit. Quite a dark one in there, and I'll swap to that thick brush again. And get some of this brighter green, blend that in. I am actually picking up quite a bit of the black there too. And what about some yellow? Now, the holly leaves don't actually have yellow in, but I like that. There. It's a bit much with the charcoal, but remember if you're using pencil, it won't show up so much. Now this one here, I've done it with the felt tips, but I'm not that happy with it at the moment. So I think I might... Tell you what, it would probably look better if we did it green, but I'm just going to use a bit of orange in there, just to show you. So I've used a marker pen there. We just want to try and keep that leaf shape so it looks fairly symmetrical in its way out. Now it's up to you what you do with the rest of the background. Actually it's up to you what you do with any of it. It's your piece of work. So maybe that will give you some ideas of how you might design yours. Remember we talked about the four representing the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. But you could choose it to represent something else. You might want to Think about it representing people in your family or you might just want this to represent nature and creation. Now I've got a really easy way for you to design your leaves <coughs> and I've done a little bit of this already because it would take too long for you to watch me do it all. I've just used felt tips and I made myself a template now this is a really easy thing to do. So you draw out your square 
and then you mark the middle with a cross like I did earlier and cut yourself a template to fit about halfway. So I think mine measured 16 across and this is seven and a half, seven and a half across. And I've chosen, I'm going to choose four different types of colours, partly to represent the seasons. My friend Rachel, who lives in the city, has a tree outside her house and this year she photographed it every season and I hope you can see a picture of that up on the screen. So you can see we can use all different colours depending on what season it is and I am going to use that idea. Now for this I'm going to do the green one. You probably only want to use three different colours. So I'm going to take out this one and choose these three. Um, if you've only got two greens it might be good to introduce a um, yellow in this one. Yellow is always a good colour and then line up your template. So you need to hold that in place. If you're struggling to hold it in place you can use some tape or some blue tack. And then line your ruler exactly along the middle line. It's really easy. Okay, so we're going to draw a line down the middle. Remember which way the lines go on your leaf. So we need to go the same way. And just scribble up there with your colours. Try and leave quite a bit of white if you don't want too much of it to be in colour. Now, when you take your ruler off, make sure you hold your cardboard down and we're going to swap the ruler onto the other side and then do exactly the same on the other side. There's my three colours. And there we go. So you've got four different coloured leaves. Now you can use whichever colour you want, you could use whichever shape you want, but this um, shape is a really simple one. I think if I did it again, maybe I'd make the leaves a little bit smaller so they didn't overlap. Now if you wanted to, again, you could fill these gaps in with anything you'd like. You could use something like this um, to fill the gaps in these little dots. Or you may think it's all fine as it is. In fact, now it's coloured in, I feel like the edge needs to be a little bit darker. Frame in the back. You could even go around the outside of your frame as well if it's straight, but mine isn't very straight. So there's another idea which you can really easily do with crayons, felt tips, a cereal box, and a piece of paper. And you can do any colours you want, and you might choose that they represent, they symbolise something that's important to you. Now the other thing you can do is work on an actual tile. These tiles aren't square, um, but what I would do if I was going to do this is just make it square because it's a good idea to, to kind of limit yourself to that sort of shape. Um, and then you can draw on tiles with felt tips or markers. So you could draw on with these um, and you can draw any sort of shape you want. You could also use acrylic paint on tiles, but I won't do that now, but that's another idea. Another great thing you can do, which is really messy, but it it's printing, so it takes away any worries of trying to be perfect. So just get yourself some paints. These are just water-based paints. Um, make sure you've got some covering on your table. You'll probably need a paintbrush, or you can dip otherwise, um, and you can work on paper or canvas or whatever you like to do. Now I did this earlier because um, it takes quite a long time to dry and I used these leaves, these shapes, to do some printing. And I used the sticks as paintbrushes too. Now as you can see, it doesn't really look amazing because you just have to go with whatever comes off the, the end of your print. Um, but if I take one of my frames you can then look at what you've got and see this is quite a nice bit of pine and there's quite a nice print i think i'd probably go for this middle one and i'm actually going to mark that out now when tiles are placed in cathedrals 
you don't just get one on its own, you get lots. So if this was cut out and there were lots and lots of them printed, it actually would probably look quite good. I'm not sure if a cathedral would accept a tile that looked like this. Um, and the colours would be fairly unusual for a cathedral as well. But if you were designing it for your own bathroom, perhaps, you might like this sort of tile repeated again and again. You can use whatever colours you want to. Um, and it does get quite messy, so you need to make sure you leave it to dry. And be careful what you put in your wet leaves in between that. So there's lots of ideas, lots of different materials that you can use. Just use whatever you've got in your house. Just check with your grown up that that's fine. You can also use some stylized ideas. So if you've not got a sketchbook, get yourself one. You can staple some scrap paper together and you can start sketching ideas. So I've got these ideas. I think I copied them off some wrapping paper. Um, but they, you can tell they're flowers, but they're really stylized designs. So you can do that with your leaves. And um, always some trees as well. Stylized trees. So they're not any particular type of tree. Um, but you can tell that they're supposed to be trees. So you could do this with your leaves, your holly leaves, or anything else you've seen while you've been out and about. So I hope that's given you some ideas. You've got your pencil drawings. You've got your trees, you've got your printing, you've got these leaf designs, which I hope you'll have a go at. And you've got these ideas using felt tips, um, crayons, paints. I've got some oil pastels, you could use soft pastels or chalk. You could even go out and draw these onto the slabs with chalk outside your house. Um, I know we often have chalk drawings on the pavements outside the house. When you've had a go at your artwork, it would be really great if we could see them, whether they're in progress or whether they're finished pieces. And you can send those into Worcester Cathedral. You can either use the hashtag on Twitter, Love Worcester Outdoors, or you can email the cathedral and the details will come up on the screen. I'm going to leave you with some photographs of some of the work that I've done, some of the playing around and some of the photos I took when I was outdoors. And I hope you have enjoyed this workshop. Bye. Thank you.